Hey, how's it going guys? Jack and Matt here with the Toaster Bros, and today we're going to be parting together this $850 i5 gaming PC. And also this is our first client PC build for our PC business we are opening up. We'll talk more about that later in today's video, but before we get into that, let's hear a word from today's sponsor. Today's video is brought to you by ASRock and their B550 Tai Chi Razer motherboard. This motherboard supports AMD's 5000 series CPUs and boasts a 16 phase Dr. Moss power design to handle even the highest end CPUs that AMD has to offer. Now, if you love RGB, then this motherboard featuring Razer Chroma ARGB support will allow you to sync the lighting of your motherboard and Razer Chroma enabled devices for a truly immersive experience. The motherboard also comes packed with Killer Ethernet E3100 and Killer Wi-Fi 6 designed specifically for competitive gamers and performance hungry users to reduce network latency and offer an awesome online experience. Now, if you want to learn more about this motherboard, be sure to check the link in the description down below and special thanks again to ASRock for sponsoring today's video. So the total for this build is 850, including all the parts. We even are including a one terabyte SSD and a 256 gig one so that you have plenty of storage room. And of course, a couple of these parts are already open because, well, we're actually upgrading a previous client's build. So why don't we go ahead and talk about the parts that we chose for this? So originally his build featured a E3-1230, which if you don't know, is basically just like a quad-core third-gen Xeon. So this one here, the 10400, is an actual six-core, 12-threaded processor. So very fast, it's very new, it's 10th gen, so it's basically, you know, as up-to-date as you can get. And honestly, these things for gaming are just hands down some of the best bang-for-buck processors you can get right now. Now for the motherboard, we decided to go with the Gigabyte B460M. So you could technically go with a slightly higher, slightly lower end board, but we like to meet in the middle and go with the B460s because they do allow a little bit of overclocking here and there. They allow you to get the slightly faster RAM speeds that Intel can somewhat handle. Um, and you know, it's just a good micro ATX motherboard. Now for RAM, once again, you know, this is uh, the typical RGB Team Group T-Force Delta, which by the way, I knew they have a really good deal on at the time of making this. We don't know if they still will, but uh, 16 gigs, 3000 megahertz, because Intel, you really can't usually go over like the 2993 or whatever it is. So 3000 is plenty, it's RGB, it's pretty. And uh, honestly, for the price, it's going inside a really nice looking case, which we'll get to in a minute. Matt loves talking about it. So RGB all the way. And normally this is not a route we would normally do, but well, we already upgraded the build once and basically originally came with a 256 SSD and uh, he needed more storage. So he ended up buying this SK Hynix one terabyte SSD. Normally we would just go with one NVMe SSD, but this build before did not support NVMe M.2 SSDs. So here we have two hard, uh, SSDs, which I, we did include in the price. Now for the graphics card, this is the Gigabyte 5600 XT. This is a card that's actually kind of in stock right now. We've seen a lot of issues with actually getting your hands on stuff like 1660 Supers or any 2000 series RTX cards. So we're kind of in an awkward period with all these new cards being released. But the 5600 XT is definitely no slouch and can perform at, well, 1080p high settings pretty much any game and 1440p if you want to. Look at this, guys. This is becoming a staple on the channel. This is the Ares Game 500 watt power supply. It is 80 plus bronze. It does come with some black sleeve cables, which is why we go with this power supply because at its price point it's the nicest looking one so you don't have to opt for like custom cables but it is very reliable from our testing and many builds we've done using this power supply and we're very excited using this pc build once again and for the case this is a case we've actually used a lot this is the mb 320 l uh, we normally use the 311 l which does come with the mesh front for better airflow but in terms of this build it's not super power demanding so in terms of keeping it nice and cool these vents right here will do perfectly fine and it comes with nice rgb it is micro atx and it is very affordable so that's why it's like our number one recommendation for a build that is using a micro atx motherboard it's going to turn out looking really nice and i'm very excited to put this thing together how we just jump right into it shall we
right, ladies and gentlemen, now that we have this $850 gaming PC all put together, let's talk about some benchmarks real quick. Now, we decided to test this PC in a couple of titles, those being Call of Duty Warzone, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, and Rainbow Six Siege. Do keep in mind, when we did record this benchmark rotation, Call of Duty Cold War was not released, but I do expect this PC to get very similar results as it did in Call of Duty Warzone, and that being at 1080p medium-high settings, we got over 120 FPS. This is a great entry-level PC to high refresh rate gaming. If you have a 1080p 140Hz monitor from a company like Pixio, for example, you would have no problems getting really good results on optimized settings. I do like the combo of the 5600XT and i5-10400. I've kind of dubbed this PC the only PC you can build in stock right now PC. Not really a great name, doesn't really roll off the tongue, but it is a PC that for under $1,000 you can actually pick up in most places. The i5-10400 is kind of like the Ryzen 5 3600 replacement right now. Uh, if you're somebody who has been leaning 3600, you most likely can get similar performance by just going with the i5-10400, and you do get somewhat of an upgrade path to the 11th gen line of processors that will release from Intel and will support the motherboard that we used in today's video. Next up, we tested Shadow the Tomb Raider, which is our AAA benchmark of choice, and our mixture of medium-high settings, we got an average of 76 FPS, which basically gives this the thumbs-up approval for pretty much most AAA titles on the market. Shadow the Tomb Raider is a very demanding game, and running on medium-high settings and getting over 60 FPS is no easy achievement, and this goes to show you that this PC would be great for pretty much any new AAA title on the market, and you can pretty much guarantee you will get over 60 FPS in most games. I do believe the 5600XT is the bottleneck in this situation, so you most certainly could upgrade to something like a 3060 Ti or 3070 or 6800 in the near future when those things do come around, and the 10400 should have no problem handling those. And the last game we decided to test was Rainbow Six Siege, which kind of gives us a esports vibe, and we did get a high setting result of 271 FPS average. Sorry about our built-in benchmark, There's, for some weird reason it doesn't want to pull the actual benchmark file when it's done, so I have to go through the directory and pick it out, and for some reason it looks all distorted, so apologize for that, but uh, Rainbow Six Siege is a good test to show how this thing will perform in esports titles on medium-high settings. This PC will be great for Fortnite, it will be great for Valorant, CSGO, Rocket League, and games like Rainbow Six Siege, so you definitely can play some high refresh rate if you wanted to at under $1,000. So overall, I'm very happy with how this PC turned out. It is the one PC you could probably pick up right now, and those links down below will actually take you somewhere. So that's kind of a good thing, and hopefully stock gets a little bit better here uh, so we actually have some different builds we could do on the channel. But uh, the i5-10400 and 5600XT is a really good pair, and I'm happy we were able to do it in today's video. Now, let's go ahead and bring Jackson back in here to wrap this video up real quick. So you guys probably already expected the outcome of this, but hey, for 850 bucks, worked great, we're really excited about it, it looks great, performs great, smells great, sounds great. All of the above. That i5-10400 is a really good alternative to the Ryzen 5 3600 right now, which the last time I checked on Newegg was like marked up to like 200 and something dollars, which it's a great processor, but once it approaches that price point, it's not really worth it. So the 10400 is a really good alternative that is in stock and the motherboards are easy to get as well. So it's a great idea to go Intel right now. I can't believe I'm saying that, but for a build around this price range, the 10400 is an awesome value. So if you guys haven't already, don't forget to check out our other two YouTube channels and also our twitch.tv slash toasterbros. And don't forget to check out uh, pcbros.tech as well. Ooh, yes. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And we'll see you guys in the next one. Goodbye. Another happy customer could be you too.